Okay, so my name's Daniel Thompson, and I'm back with another video about Wasp Boss running on the Pine 64 Pine Time. Um, and this video is going to be slightly different to some of the ones I've done previously, because uh, instead of showing you how to develop on the Pine Time, I'm simply going to show you some of Wasp Boss features. So you're looking at the current clock, and you saw it change time a little bit earlier as we went in over the air to update the time. Um, and now we'll start looking at what the applications are. So first application I was going to show you is the stopwatch. This is really simple. Um, if you touch the screen, you get a lap time. And we can have multiple lap times. It will show you up to four different split times uh, as you run around. Um, we can then stop and again, touch the screen to reset. That's the stopwatch app. And both the clock and the stopwatch are on what we call the, the quick ring which is the ring of the most commonly used applications. So eventually we'll add some additional applications, but at the moment there's only two applications on that ring. If we want to look at any of the other applications, we can sweep upwards to get the launcher. Um, so this is how it looks uh, with the current defaults. So we get the torch, simple flashlight turns the backlight up to max. Um, we've also got a settings application to control how bright the backlight is. We can turn up to high, low, we'll leave it back at medium. Um, and I finally got the self-test. Now the self-test is what I use to test every kind of uh, wasp boss feature. Um, and you notice there's a little scrolling indicator in the bottom corner, which we have in our applications that can scroll. So the first one is a very simple button test. It simply tells us whether we're pressing the button on the side. Um, I'll come back to the crash test because that's kind of interesting. We've then got some drawing benchmarks so that I can test how quickly it draws strings, draws um, uh, other bits and pieces. We have the simple position touch test. Um, and then we've got some slightly more advanced string tests where we automatically wrap words. So that's a fundamental feature for doing things like notifications because we need to wrap the notifications automatically. Uh, so you'll notice that that wrapped, um, wrapped in multiple different ways is all one word. So it's been carefully split in different ways the rest of the, the system. You'll notice there also that as the watch uh, automatically powered off, it switched away from the self-test and back to the watch. So whenever you turn it on, it will automatically show you the right thing. Um, and then I started to show you the crash test. So what happens when we're on the crash test is when I press the button on the watch, the application will crash. And this is one of the features I rather like. If you've ever had an Atari ST, you'll recognize this as being a um, homage to that, where it shows you what happens when it crashed. And we can go in and we can get the stack trace. So if we've written an application, it's gone bad, we can see on the watch that it's gone bad. And you can again, you can see the scrolling indicators at the bottom uh, to tell us that we've reached the end of the crash dump. And if we just scroll up from the end of a notification or from a crash dump, um, we end up back on the watch again. So that's all the kind of built-in features, um, which are kind of interesting. And like I say, the crash is really nice. It's made developing on the device so much easier. Um, so I'm now going to show you what happens when we download extra code onto the watch. So I've just kicked off on a laptop next to me a download of Conway's Game of Life. So I was very sad to learn this week that uh, Professor John Conway, who created the rules to, to his Game of Life, uh, died of, of COVID-19 complications. Um, and Game of Life was one of the first kind of toy programs I ever remember seeing on a computer, on old Macintosh as it happens. Um, and it just has a lovely sparked interest in mathematics and that some of the little fun things you can do with numbers. Um, so I took a couple of days out for making Wasp Boss more awesome this week just to write the game of life so that we could see it run on the phone. Um, and in actual fact, I've just swapped out the video while I've been talking for this section, which would have left a black screen up. And I've put in some footage of the game of life running on the watch. Uh, so again, we can turn it back on now. And now it's alphabetized, so the launcher always shows in alphabetical order. It's automatically inserted life in alphabetical order. And when I launch it, you can see the cells start to work. There's only four rules, and they actually condense down into two very simple rules, um, which controls whether a cell is alive or dead in the grid. Um, and like I say, it's hard to say what sort of games we can run on a watch, but I quite like watching this slowly move around and evolve. I've watched it for... 15, 20 minutes, I've not yet seen it form into a cyclic pattern. Um, I think after about, certainly in theory, a sort of hour or so, it would probably start to become uh, cyclic. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw in a couple of placeholder applications. So I've shown you what the watch was like from boot. I'm just now over the air loading a couple more applications onto the watch. 
Um, and what I've done now is I've added some placeholders into the quick ring. So after we go through the stopwatch, we can then go to where the heart rate monitor would be. We can scroll around to the step counter. You can also add any applications you would like to yourself um, that you've thought of. You can add them either to the quick ring or to the launcher. And likewise, the launcher, I just want to show you how it scrolls. So again, we've got a scroll indicator. We've put it at the top here so it doesn't interfere with the text and the rest of the, uh, the labels. Um, but as we scroll down, the arrow versus indicator, say we've got to the bottom. There's also actually a little, you might not be able to hear it, but there's vibration happening there if you try and scroll when you can't scroll, when it's not allowed. And again, it's just a toy placeholder that tells us that something's happened. Um, so that's all I really wanted to show you, uh, this thing. You notice that the life stays its state, so that when I relaunch the life application, it hasn't gone back to its seed state, it's remembered its state. And that's the philosophy of all the WASP applications. The idea is that your application should remember its state when it gets put to sleep, so that when it's redrawn, it doesn't feel like it's ever stopped running. Kind of like the old Palmos, it has stopped running, but we're trying to give the illusion that it hasn't. And you get the same thing with the stopwatch. The stopwatch keeps running in the background. All these things, the applications appear to run in the background, even if there's a certain amount of trickery behind it. So that's all I wanted to show you this time. Next time I come back, I will be back showing you kind of developer toys and tricks about how to code Python on your watch. Um, but for now, that's it, and I shall see you in the next video.